factoring. Factoring in polynomial form can be attributed to the Greeks, but factoring in arithmetic with numbers is attributed to al Khwarizmi, the Arabic mathematician, although he did use many ideas from the Greeks. Well, we've heard of the four normal operations, you know, these guys. However, f let's just ignore three of them. We don't need you guys. What we need is multiplication. So, now, multiplication. Well, we don't need it exactly. What we're talking about is factoring. And factoring is kind of like reverse multiplication or unmultiplying. Now, you may just think that's division, isn't it? Well, division is quite similar to it, but this is different. So, let's say we have... Alright, so we have factoring, which is kind of like unmultiplication. So, let's say we have, I don't know, 36. Now, what numbers can make up 36, for example? Well, we can say 3 times 12 is 36. So... These two are factors, and you know this is the product. However, let's put that in reverse. And now we have 36 is 3 times 12. Now, let's make this equal sign into an arrow sign. And this multiplication sign into an and. Now do you see it? 36 can be created by multiplying 3 and 12. 3 and 12 are thus known as factors. So, have we done it? Have we factored 36? Well, yes, but also not quite. Hmm. Or, as many people would say, well, yes, but actually no. Because, you see, you might be saying, Wait a second, is it 2 times 18 equal to 36? Or if you're a multiplication fan, you might be a uh, multiplication table fan, you might be saying, wait, is it 9 times 4 36? Or 6 times 6 36? Well, I have good news for all of you. These are all factors. So that means there's more than one right answer to this problem? <gasps> so, let's see how many right answers there are. And what we can do to test this is check for the bill of divisibility. Checking for divisibility is basically seeing if you, uh, let's say you take a number and you take another number. Testing for divisibility, or let's say you have red and you have blue. Testing for divisibility is like saying, if I divide blue by red, then will I get an integer? If, uh, will I get an integer? If you, I get an integer, then red is divisible by blue. However, if this is a decimal, then that means that red is not blue is not divisible by red. So, that's the thing. So, let's say we have 36, we divide it by 2. Well, we can do that quite easily. Let's do some long division. Well, 3 minus 2. So, we'll put a 2 in the 10th place, or rather a 1, because 2 divided by 2 is 1. And so, 3 minus 2 is 1. You bring down the other digit, 16 minus 16 is 0, and 16 divided by 2 is 8. You get 18 thus. So, now, that we got an integer with no remainder at all. So that means that 2 is divisible by 36, or 36 is divisible by 2. That means 2 is a factor of 36, just like if this thing was an integer, that would mean that red it was a factor of blue. So, let's test that out. Now, fortunately, we can we only have to test that out for 
the number itself, which will always be a factor, because if you multiply one by a number, it gets you a number. So you know that one in the number itself, which in this case is 36, will always be factors, no matter what. And we already have several others, like for example, two, nine, or two, three. We also have four. We have uh, we have six. We have nine, and we have twelve, and we have eighteen. So we already have a hefty amount of factors. Now, what are the numbers that we've tested that are less than 18 or less than half of the number? Because you have to remember that zero, that two is the smallest factor of any number that's not one. Or I mean, I meant, I meant. What I mean is that when looking for the factor of a number, you can't have, for example, 34 and divide it into 36. That can't happen because what you're doing is you're leaving kind of like a small decimal. So if you're doing 18 into 36, that's gonna work. But if you do say 19 into 36, that's not gonna work. That's going to give you a huge decimal instead. Let's see what that decimal is. 36 over 19. And of course, you don't have to read that. So, you can, oh, you only really have to test out numbers that are less than 18. Anything that's more than 18 or anything that's more than half the number you're testing will not work. So, now, let's see. If we have, um, let's test all of the numbers that we uh, that are below 18 that we haven't already. So we haven't tested one. We haven't tested five, seven, eight. Um, we have tested nine. Haven't tested ten or eleven. We haven't tested thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, or seventeen. So these are all the numbers we need to test. Well, first of all, we already know that one will always be a factor, so we can eliminate that. And five, let's divide 36 by five. Well, it's 7.2. Even though it's small, it's still a decimal. Or we could do it the old fastened way, I guess. 36, five, and minus zero, doesn't go into that any times. So 36 minus 35, which is seven, and it leaves a remainder of one. So now that means that that one becomes a one over five. And one over five is 0 0.2. And you see this remainder? That becomes a decimal, which we can't have. So five is out of the game. What about seven? Well, um, that's also a decimal, out of the game. Eight is pretty close, but it's also out of the game. 10 is out of the game. Dividing 36 by 10 gives you 3.6. 36, 36 divided by 11 is out of the game. 3.2777, then we have 36 divided by 13, which is also out of the game with 2.769. Then we have 36 divided by 14, which is also also out of the game with 2.5714, blah, blah, blah. Then we have 36 over 15, which with 2.4 is also out of the game. Wow, we're really eliminating contestants today. 36 over 16 is 2.25. And 36 over 17 is, as you guessed, also out of the game with 2.11764709 and blah, blah, blah. So it looks like we've eliminated all of our contestants. Rip. So these 
or the factors that we have left. So let's put back these guys. And here are our factors. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 9, 12, 18, 36. So now, why is this useful? Well, it's useful in both algebra, which we'll get to later, to be continued. And it's useful for simplifying fractions, which I guess we could do right now. So, if we have to simplify a fraction, like for example, 96 or, let's say we want to do a fraction like 36 over eight. How would we simplify that? Well, let's see if these two share any common factors. So we know the factors of 36, we don't want to go through that pain again, do we now? I believe these were all of the factors of 36. Am I missing any? Oh, yeah, I'm missing, no. No, so these are all of the factors of 36. What about the factor of eight? Well, we can always factor out eight. So eight could have one itself and anything between two, one and four. So two works and four works. Three does not. So that means that we have one, two, four, and eight. Now, what is the biggest factor that they share in common? Four. They also share two and one, but those are tiny. And so that means they can't be counted. So we can split 36 into nine times four, and we can split eight into two times four, which gives us nine over two times four over four. Four over four is one. And that just gives us nine divided by two, which we can't simplify further because nine is not divisible by two. So those are, that's an application of um, factoring. That is how to factor. Thank you everybody for watching.